Hey there, John Morse here, johnmorseonline.com. In this video, I'm going to be showing you five different ways to find freelance work. I'm going to be going through some, probably some common ones that you've, you've heard of and maybe hopefully some ones that you haven't thought of or hadn't heard of that'll spark some ideas for you to get out there and do some different things. All right, so with that said, let me just jump right into this. So the first one that is the obvious one that I sort of want to get out of the way because I talk about this a lot and I think a lot of other people do too as well, which is freelancing platforms. And there's a ton of them out there. Some of them, again, you probably have heard of. But let me go through sort of a list here. And maybe some of these you won't have heard of. And it'll spark some ideas for different places that you can get work. So the first one is Upwork. You're probably familiar with that one. Uh, let me just hop on over to Upwork.com real quick. Upwork, let me just talk about Upwork. I'll go through the list a little bit quicker, but let me just talk about Upwork real quick because it is, uh, at least last I checked, it is still the largest freelancing platform on the planet. So I think most everybody, if you're a freelancer or want to do freelancing, you should have a profile here simply because the amount of work that comes through, this is sort of the biggest place. It just sort of makes sense to to have a, a, a presence here. It's like if you were, you know, you were a, a music artist, you would make sure that your CDs were in Walmart and Best Buy and some of these sort of standard places where people go to buy that sort of thing. So again, I really think you should have a, a profile here. One of the really big important things about Upwork is understanding their algorithms and how those algorithms tie into what clients actually want from a freelancer. Because I think Upwork has done a really good job of making that connection and putting those two things together to where the algorithms really do support what the people on uh, that are looking to hire freelancers on their site want. And so when you understand that and how it all sort of works together, what happens is, is you sort of get a clear picture of how to build your profile, how to write your proposals, how to do all the things that you got to do on Upwork, how to do it in a in such a way where you not only are able to rank higher in uh, searches or show up more often in the suggested freelancer list when someone creates a new project, but also when people look at your profile, they read your proposals and so forth. It, it it really appeals to them and really sort of speaks to what it is that they want to hear. And that's all just going to allow you to get work from the start, get hired more often, make more money, all that sort of thing. So understanding those algorithms and specifically how they feed into what freelancers on Upwork want or what clients on uh, Upwork want. Now, let me just do do my shameless plug here. I do have a full course on this called Upwork 101 at Upwork101.com, which basically takes you through my experience on Upwork, uh, what I learned when I first started out with Upwork struggling, not getting much work, and then some stuff I discovered from Upwork itself uh, and how that changed my entire approach to what I was doing on Upwork, what I changed, what you need to change, and then the results of that and and ultimately you know, started getting work, started getting more work than I could even handle. And and I just walk you through what, what I learned and what I changed and, and how to do that for your profile as well. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to dive into Upwork and, and really take advantage of this platform, head on over to upwork101.com. Of course, though, it's not the only one. You have sites like TopTal, you have Freelancer. One that I want to show you that you may not have heard of before, I actually hadn't, which is LinkedIn Profinder. So this is something that they have just come out with. If you just Google LinkedIn profi uh, Profinder, you'll see it right here at the top. And if we click through to this, what this actually is, is a tool for people on LinkedIn to go in and find freelancers that they can hire for their project. Now, so that's pretty cool. LinkedIn's huge. Again, this feels like something you should probably just have a profile on. But if we come up here to the top, you can see it under, if you're signed into LinkedIn, under your, your name here, there'll be this thing that says, are you a pro? So if you click that, this is where you can actually apply to become a part of the ProFinder network as a freelancer. And so, I again, this just feels like something that you should probably uh, uh, be a part of if you're not already and at least apply and, apply and try to get in there. Uh, so that's one. There's Guru, 99designs, Fiverr. People per hour, I freelance, and simply hired, or a number of other uh, platforms that are out there. Again, my my suggestion on this is it probably doesn't hurt to have a, a profile on most of these. Some of these, like Ninety Nine Designs, is uh, specifically for designers, so maybe that doesn't fit for you. Fiverr, 
it's sort of the way they do it's a little different so maybe that's not a good fit so i could see maybe some of those skipping but you know the more you have your name out there the more places you are just the more chance that you can get work so don't just you know fall into one uh tr try to get your name out as much as possible all right so those are the freelancing platforms again i think a lot of people talk about that sort of stuff so i want to go into some other things that you can do then beyond that so the second thing then is is one that is probably the most scary, the probably that uh, most people watching this are least likely to do, which means if you do it, you have a real advantage. So this is a place where if you can sort of muster up the courage to do this, you can have a real advantage over a lot of other freelancers out there. So the second one is the cold pitch. And essentially what this is, is where you go to say, you find local businesses and, and their websites and ones that look like they need some help. And essentially, you email them and pitch them. You give them a cold pitch on you reworking their website. Now, the key here is finding finding web uh, local businesses that need help. So you can just go, go into Google and you can search something like restaurant or auto body or something along those lines and find, again, businesses in your local area. Maybe it's a dance studio. Just get creative and, again, find things in your particular area and businesses in your area and then just sort of, just sort of go through them. So if I just do, let's say, auto body shop and we'll, there will be a, a bunch from where I live. But if you just start, you'll see auto body shop, auto body, auto body. You can just sort of click through all of these and see, okay, so this is a website that, I mean, it's not horrible, but this is a website that could probably use an upgrade. Okay. So this is, you've now identified a, a potential prospect. Another one I found uh, is this one here. Again, it's not completely horrible, but this is one that could probably look sort of old and dated and could use an upgrade. So this is something you could work with. So the key is to go through, don't just go through the first page of your Google search results. Does it really matter if the client that you got hired for, who's you know, paying you a couple thousand dollars to redo their website was on page six of Google? I mean, what do you, what do you ultimately really care? So there's going to be a bunch of these in your local area, especially if you live in a, a highly populated area. Go through those and find as many as you can, and these are potential clients for you to cold pitch. Now, here's what to make sure and include in your pitch. First off, you need to you need to start off with the problem, and you, you sort of got to be a little gentle about this. You don't just want to go in and be like, hey, your website's horrible, and let me fix it, but you want to go in and say, hey, I was uh, happened to come across your website the other day, and don't do dear hiring manager. Like, Take some time to figure out who, you know, who to contact on this, if you can find names or whatever, uh, sometimes you can't always do that, but you really want to do some research on this and see if you can figure it out. Like this is owned by Auto Body Concepts Inc., so you know maybe you can Google that and figure out who the owner of that particular company is, or if they have a contact form, etc. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to explain to them to the problem. Come come here and say, hey, you know this isn't. This isn't terrible, but if we compare this to your competitors, the visual appeal of this is not necessarily great. You have this link up here that's blue when you're on the home page. You know, just sort of point out the problems with screenshots, uh, uh, if you can, would would be the ideal, and then move from that into who you are and what you do, and say, hey, I'm a you know I'm a web designer. I specialize in making visually appealing websites. Here's a few examples of stuff that I've done. And what my proposal is to you is to rework your website and here's what I charge. So the problem, who you are and what you do, your proposed solution, meaning give them something to look at. Don't just say, hey, I can fix your site. Actually take some time to create a quick mock-up of how you would rework the, their website and send them screenshots so they can sort of see the before and after and then include the price. This is what I charge you. You essentially want to give them everything to make a decision because you're going to probably be going through and putting out a, a bunch of these at a time. And so you just want to get a bunch out there and and have them have everything to make a decision. So when they're emailing you back, they're basically saying, hey, that sounds like a good idea. I want to do that or no, I'll pass or they just don't respond at all. So you just want to kind of give it all to them and then see what comes back to you. And the more you put out, eventually the more that's going to come back to you. This is one of those places where it is sort of a numbers game, although 
that doesn't mean you should copy and paste and do all that sort of stuff. You want to make a unique proposal for each p uh, potential client. All right. That's the cold pitch. So again, a lot of people aren't going to do that. But if you do do that, you can, uh, I think, can really set yourself apart and, and have an advantage with that. Another one is job boards. So finding lesser known job boards that are out there using Google to do searches like WordPress job board or PHP job board or JavaScript job board. And you do have to weed through a decent amount in all of that. But when you find a job board, a good one, a lot of times that's one job board is sort of a constant source if it's getting enough activity of new jobs coming through. So that can be one can be a, a, a really good quality find. And so uh, it's worth taking the time to do that. An example of this is the WordPress job board. So this is at jobs.wordpress.net. And you can see, you know, there was one so far uh, today, April 25th, there was two, two on the 24th. You know, there's not, there's not thousands coming through like you see over on Upwork and so forth. But there's a few here and hey, if you bid on one and one one of these jobs is, you know, a couple thousand dollar project, that can be enough for, you know, a couple weeks or a month maybe depending on your situation. So uh, again, and this is just one job board. You can go out there and find others and so forth. And this is just one, you know, you're still doing Upwork, you're still doing your cold pitches, you add this on top of it. Now you're getting to a place where you're starting to stack up all the different places that you can find work. So again, just go out there, do some research and find those lesser known job boards because they're probably not going to be near as competitive as a site like Upwork or Freelancer, et cetera. Another one that I don't think a ton of people think about is Twitter. So if you go to twitter.com slash search, or if you come up just to the search bar up here and you search for terms like, for example, if you're looking for PHP work, you might do PHP jobs or PHP developer, or PHP freelancer, things along those lines that would bring up sort of results relevant to what you do. Now you're going to have to wade through stuff like this, right? You're going to have to wade through posts and all that sort of thing. But you can see right here, not very far, looking for a well-experienced developer to develop a learning system, Python, PHP, C Sharp, JavaScript, etc. Looking for experienced remote WordPress developer to manage, maintain, and create new features for my site. We're looking for a PHP developer in whatever place that is. Uh, we want to do something new. If you're a passionate JavaScript developer with PHP skills, please get in touch. So again, you can just sort of go down through this and and do these different searches and find tweets about people looking for, you know, whatever particular thing you happen to do. If you're a developer, or a writer, or a designer, or whatever you are, you can sort of go through and look for people. You just have to do the the right sort of searches, and it can take a little bit to figure out what that is, but it's worth the time because once you do, I mean, you saw within the first four or five tweets, there was three or four job people looking to hire somebody in those three or four tweets, and I don't, I mean, this one had two comments. This one has a bunch. This is 28. Uh, six comments. One comment. Let's see, here's another one. Five comments. So it's not the 30 or 40 like you're going to find on Upwork, and that sort of personal connection back and forth could maybe help you. And of course, you know, if you're if you're paying on top, uh, staying on top of this and doing this on a daily basis, you're going to see them first when they come through, and you're going to be one of the first people to comment on them, and that can be uh, helpful. And of course, this is just Twitter. You can do the same thing on you know, Facebook and, and maybe even Google Plus and some all of these other social media networks out there. Learn how to dig into it and find people out there that are looking for uh, to hire someone who, who does what you do. And then once you figure that out, you can just sort of start tapping into that. All right. So uh, the other thing real quick on this is it's not a five minute thing either. Right, we just scrolled scrolled real quick, but you should scroll and scroll and scroll. Like take an hour or more going through this and responding to people, or two hours a day, or whatever it takes. But don't just spend, don't just look at the first. It's just like the Google stuff. Don't look at the first, just the first page. Right, that's what everybody else does. Right, where you win is where you get down in here where nobody else is scrolling to, nobody else is looking at this stuff down here because they're too lazy to do it. Don't be that person. Get down in here, you know, sort of grind this out and, and find find the, the little nuggets of gold hidden in here. All right, the last one then is small business meetup groups. This is sort of, again, a lot uh, offline strategy. 
I'm on meetup.com, which is a pretty neat little tool to show you different meetup groups within your sort of local area. And the really great thing about meetup groups is if you get in the sort of the right ones, and I'll talk about that in a second, but if you get in the right meetup groups, you are going to be sort of the, <laughs> you're going to be in high demand. I've, I've been in several myself and every single one that I was in, you know, the people in there are not very often, not very tech savvy. They, but they know that they need to be doing a website or something right. And so you sort of become the focal point for a lot of those people. And you can I, basically every meetup meeting that I went to in these groups, I had someone approaching me about some project they, they wanted me to work on. And so it can be a really, really great and kind of easy way, almost just sort of show up and say, Hey, I do tech stuff and you can all start getting work. So the trick is making sure you get in the right ones and sort of a perfect example here. You have this one called smart success business network of Omaha, which is more of a general business sort of meetup group. And then you have one like this, which is WP Omaha, Omaha's WordPress user group. You will probably be attracted to things like this, meeting up with other developers. And that's fine. Get in those groups because you can network and you guys can pass leads back and forth. And that, that can be helpful. However, you want to make sure you get in some of these more generic ones with people that are like realtors or insurance people or lawyers, etc., because those are not colleagues, those are actual potential clients. And that is the situation where you're in those groups. Oftentimes, these groups only allow one person from each industry. So if you're a lawyer, they only allow one lawyer in the group, or they only allow one realtor. And they're only going to allow one sort of tech, you know, web development person. So if you can be that one person and there's 30 or 40 people in that group, you can basically be the go-to person for all of those people's tech needs. And again, every time I've done this, I just had people sort of throwing work at me. So uh, that can be really valuable. If you join two or three or four meetup groups, then that can start to stack up pretty quick. So that those are five different ways that you can get out and and start finding freelance work. The big thing here is not to just do one, right? Not to just do uh, being on the platforms or not to just do cold pitches, but to do the be on the platforms, be on multiple platforms, do cold pitches, get on job boards, apply, you know, apply for the projects on job boards, search Twitter, get in meetup groups. You start stacking all of these cards in your favor. It, you sort of reach a point where it's hard not to start getting something like you really have to be doing something wrong in terms of either your skill set or the way you interact with people. And even that, if you like figuring that out and what the problem is, then you can fix it and work on it is, is can be really, really helpful. So this sort of puts you in a position where you have to you have to get it right. You have to figure it out because uh, there's so many people that are going to be sort of coming towards you for work. You have to to sort of get everything in, in order and figure out how to get clients and so forth. So, again, stack all of this stuff up in your favor, and and that's gonna uh, be what helps you ultimately to start getting work long term and so forth. So, hopefully that that's something that you find helpful. If you did, I would appreciate if you would make sure and hit the like button on this video so that I know that you, you did get value from this. Also, if you want to support the show and what I do here, I'd really appreciate that. You can get do that at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. Not only will you be supporting what I do, but you're also going to get access to all of my past and or my current and future courses, which includes my Upwork 101 course. It includes my uh, spammers guide, a spammers guide to freelancing, which isn't about spamming at all. But uh, my PHP courses, my WordPress courses, all of that sort of stuff is is in there waiting for you, plus any future courses that I release. So. If you want to learn more about that, you can head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon, and I would greatly appreciate that. If you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure and do that so you get notified of future videos. Also, make sure and ring the bell so that you actually get notified. And as always, thanks for watching.